All the section from the Club and Saloons is proudly brought to you by Max Place. Big field of Club and Saloons down at the Kalani International Raceway as always and the Invitational category on the Extreme Festival Race Day. They've got a big following down here and a time-based series as you get faster and faster in your car, so you move up from Class F to the front end of Class A as they head down towards turn number one now for race one. Good start there from Donny Finuka, Clint Renard around the outside looking for a chance now, but Barcy Berger dives on his inside and gets up into second place. The rest of the pack streaming through there. JP Share comes through. Man Waring, watch out for Ahmed. There you can see Kiara Finica for the first time as well. Pink Warriors and Pink Wheels going into turn one. as a young lady from Wingfield Motors. She's fighting hard there for her chances to be at the front end of her category. Nice start to the day here. And as you can see, perfect racing conditions. And look at this field. Just an array of cars. GTV 6s, Golf 1s, Golf 2s. BMWs of all shape and nature. Jetters in there as well. Even old Polo Classics coming through at the back end. But right now at the front, it's all about the battle for the top three. And coming through there, watch out for the battle there as well for Class C. Truffies van Tonda on the back end there, Baby Jakes. The Universal Healthcare man trying to find a way to the front end. Gary Manwaring leading things out in Class D at this point. Just on the back end of Class C as they came through the third corner on the Circuit Rose Foundation sweep. Up towards Malmesbury. And as they come past there, Manwaring has just squeezed out and got ahead. Nice move there on the 15 car. Just finding a way past and Ernst Ruiz had no answer. Down that back straight away now. Listen to this as they come down on the breaking point now. On the breaking point, Barcy Berger just squeezes out, but Donny Finuka takes the lead ahead of Renard. Barcy runs up high and wide onto the, the banking into that very, very tricky right-hander. As they come onto the main straight now, it's Golfs and BMWs at the front, and they are still fighting hard. Watch out for Cody Alberts. He's starting to make his way up to the front end too. And BMWs and Golfs fighting for the lead of this race, but Donny hangs on for now. Barcy Berger followed by Renard. Then you've got Cody Alberts, Wayne Wilson leading Class B, then Michael Lassur. Good start there from the 155 as well. Watch out for him. Rion Swat just keeping out the uh, the attentions of the 100 car. And you can see just how hard that 100 car is having to work as Cody Albert starts to make his way to the front. Now, big battle starting to rage here. You can see just how tight it is. As we go on board here with Renard coming out of turn two. G Energy corner looking for the energy now to go through the sweep and down into turn three. Donny hangs on, but Renard is starting to close that gap down big time. Barcy's all over the back of him. Berger looking for a way to get through on the BMW. It's literally like a trailer on the back end of that BMW as they go into Malmesbury. Look at that. Oh, a little bit of a touch, I think, actually, between the two of them. Bit of assistance through that corner. Saying, come on, let's get a move on. We've got a big pack hunting us down from the back end. And they are coming rapidly. The most rapid drivers at this stage are Michael Azur. Oh, problems. Down in a turn three. Oh, yes. Big one there. Gary Smith getting it all out of shape. And that uh, new shape Jetta calls the red flag out. It looks like we're going to have to go for a restart there. As the red flag comes out, Gary Smith gets out the car. It looked like he'd lost both wheels. But with those black wheels, it was a little bit of a, <laughs> a myth or legend there. He gets out the car and the uh, Kalani Marshals issue him to the sideline as we restart race number one. Back down towards turn one. This time a much better start there from Renard. Renard looks like he's gone into second place. He outguns Barcy Berger into turn one. Around the outside, yet again, two BMWs. One of them is Gary Manwaring. The one just ahead of him is JP Share. And they're trying to keep out the attentions there of the 79 car, as you can see, of Paul Munich. Oh, a little bit of fast tracking and dirt tracking. No, problems in the background there. The Jetta moving to the sideline and off the circuit. That's not the way you want to be starting the day, that is for sure. And that Volkswagen Jetta there, I think it was Willem Swart, has pulled to the inside and out of this one. Yeah, as they head down towards turn number three now. Oh, looks like a little issues in the background. Problems in the background there. I think a couple of cars got out of shape. But as we follow our leaders through, there you go, picking it up. Yes, a bit of a maneuver there. Bruce Mayer coming together with the Alpha GTV. And that Alpha, unfortunately, looking like he's going to have to come back on track. Ilva Valant comes back in the thick of Class E and F. And just might get in the way there. A little battle that's raging there between the Golf 1 and that 325 IS. Back to the mid-pack as they go through uh, Malmesbury Sweep. Very, very tight stuff. Valant is back on and running high. I think uh, yeah, definitely a problem there for Anwar Levy. Didn't get the start he wanted, that is for sure. He's not usually that far back. He's normally in this pack at the front end now as they head down into Cape Town Corner. Fostron Corner, as it's known now, as they come out of that one. It is a side-by-side -side battle there between Renard and Bossy Berger. Clint Renard on the outside, Berger on the inside. Coming through rapidly, though. Watch out as we see these cars start to attack each other down into turn one. Wayne Wilson still hanging on for the lead of Class B. Class A at this stage. It's Donny Van Eckert, Barcy Berger, and Renard. Renard runs lever so slightly wide. Getting forced wide there by the Golf 1. The Golf 2 slots in behind. They come back towards G Energy Corner. Watch out for Michael Lassur now. Also starting to apply the pressure. As they come in here, it's hard anchors. And Lassur just slots in. 
at the front end of his class, Trappis Fantondo also going well. So the Universal Healthcare car doing a super job and pulling away ever so slightly there from the Nissan Maxima and the BMW 325 IS. So Trappis is at the front end of his category. Wingfield Motors flies high at the front end though of the entire category. And right now, Donny Finico doesn't look like there's going to be any issues whatsoever. The only man he's got to watch out for is this man. And Barcy is on him, looking for a chance to possibly spoil his day. Ooh, speaking of spoiled days, that's a little bit out of shape there. The 102 just a little bit sideways and getting it all together. But a great bit of driving and a nice bit of recovery there to get it back on track. 102 JP Sher Whoa, that's a sharing a bit of dust there as well with the side of the circuit and some of the people in the grandstand. Well, hell, JP, very lucky to survive that one. Here we go, further back. JP in the mix again now, starting to push hard. And Man Waring on his inside. Man Waring finds a way through. I think JP might have a bit of a handling issue there on that car. That's why it's starting to slip and slide. Maybe a bit of a slow puncture. Let's see if he keeps it all together now. As he comes across the line now, behind. We head up into the front end of the race again, and Clint Renard looking for a way still to find a way past here on Donny Finnickirk. Finnickirk hangs on. Ooh, and the second place battle is up for grabs here. The 5-2 is just squeezing in there and looking for a chance to possibly spoil their day. And Bossy Berger... Oh, Bossy loses out to Renard again. He has to tuck in behind Clint Renard. Renard goes defensive down into turn three. Around the outside comes Bossy. Berger trying to find a way around, but that's not the way to go. It's a long way around turn three if you're on the outside. Right on there, tell Cody Alberts and watch out for Patha. Patha coming into the mix as well. And I think uh, Rafik is in for the, uh, the Facha, no doubt about it. Le Sur in the Golf 1, certainly getting quicker and quicker as they get to the closing stages of this heat. Continued battle here, and JP Share on the back end of Man Waring. Man Waring fending off the pressure that's being applied from the back end. We go on board here with Gary in this E36 as he heads down there, the super quick car, trying to go as super quick as he can. And just up ahead of him, you can see Anwar Levy there, trying to close him down in the golf. Not going to be an easy day in the saddle to do that. That little golf has got a great turn of pace. Oh, what a move though! JP dives up the inside, I was waiting for that. Just watching that rear view mirror heading down into turn five. And as they go into Fostron Corner, there's a change up between those two BMWs. Further back in the pack, it's Byron Mitchell who's fighting amongst the Golf 1s and Golf 2s. Remember, there's the other little Nissan that's in there as well. Cut for those guys as they come across the line. And of course, there you go. Young lady driver out there, Kiara Finnickirk, doing a super job there. And doing a great job to fly the flag high there for the Wingfield Motor Group. Mike's Place Clubman's in the house. And the entire Cape Town crowd are enjoying all of this action. Big dive on the inside there as the 84 machine tries to find a way past. But Bruce Mayer hasn't been able to get through there on the car. Just ahead of him, 178. You can see just how hard Dwayne Bernard is having to work there. Hard work at the front, but it's mainly for second place. And at this point in time, those three golfs are just the meat in the sandwich between the two BMWs that lead out and are sitting in fifth place. So it looks like Garafik hasn't had an answer just yet. Don't think we're going to see any changes up here as well. Let's see whether or not Renard can close in on Finnickirk. But Renard is going to be very weary that there doesn't come an attack from Lesur or from Cody Alberts. Lesur around the outside. How was that? He got great drive and a superb toe down the back straight. But there's a problem. We've lost one of the cars. Barcy's gone missing. Barcy Berger's gone missing down that back straightaway. That's probably why Lesur just able to squeeze out. There's Barcy in the background. He must have had a gear issue or some kind of problem coming out of Malmesbury. And it's given a chance now for things to change up. One lap to go. As they come across the line, it's a battle between the golfs as they head down into KFM corner. Donny Finnick hanging on for the lead. Le Sur now fighting with Renard. Cody Albert's just in the background as well. I wonder if Cody's going to be able to squeeze through there and possibly spoil the day for one of these two golfs and make it BMW's one and two. Heading down to KFM corner as well. Watch out for Baby Jakes. He currently leads his category. So a great drive here from the Class C M5 BMW. It's closing down on that Jetta. And that M5's got a good turn of pace. Further back, Gary Manwaring still hanging on for the lead of his category, Class D. But fighting hard here with the 75 car. And of course, 75 in this stage. And looking for a chance to move up is uh, Idris Ahmad. And Ahmad having a fantastic little battle there with Manwaring. Now, leaders onto the back straight. Are we going to see any changes down into that final corner? This is where things usually change up dramatically. And it's Renard at the moment in second place. Renard now being caught and passed by Michael Lesur. Lesur around his outside on the breaking point down into Cape Town corner. Is the Golf 1 better than the Golf 2? Well, originally, that's a debate that a lot of people had in terms of aerodynamics. The Golf 2 was slightly more aerodynamic, but a bigger car. And Renard's got a problem. Oh, as he pulls to the sideline, yeah, he's got a big issue. There go the other two cars. Lesur and Alberts have squeezed him out, coming through to the finish line. Is he going to be able to survive and maybe even make top four? Yes, he is. Fortunately, a long way back to Rafik, who's dropped out of it ever so slightly. And Mansur Parker there in sixth place with Baby Jakes winning out his category and coming through for a top seven overall.
Wow, what a dice. Great start to the day here for Kalani's race one results. It's Donnie Finnickirk for Wingfield Motors taking the win. Head of Michael Lassure and Cody Alberts. Clint Renard comes through and Rafik Patha. Then it was Mansur Parker taking Class B's and Baby Jakes taking the Class C's. Straight into race number two now. I'm looking forward to more action here from the Mike's Place Clubman Saloons. As they line up and get ready to go, you can see a couple of cars with a little bit of battle scars. A couple that have got some engine issues to be sorted out. And hopefully we'll get the entire pack back up and running for race number two. Little adjustments here and there, maybe some tyre pressures. There is a little bit of wind that's picked up in the afternoon, so a slightly different condition to what we had. But great, great racing conditions. And possibly even lap record conditions available now for these guys. Remember, this is a time-based category, so as you get faster and faster, you'll be moving up from the back end of Class F to the front end of Class A. And Class A, it's Renard who gets the drop. And Cody Alberts follows him down into Turn 1 on their tail. Donny Finnickirk. And Donny Finnickirk looking to try and go there with Alberts as they go into Turn 1. Yes, he does. He forces uh, the Golf 1 there of Lassure a little bit wide. As Ahmad gets forced wide there from Manwaring. Just behind that, watch out for Stacey Wilson, another one of our lady drivers, having a fantastic day in the saddle so far. But up towards turn two, and it is a big battle, resuming at the front end. Right now, Renard has got his car sorted. I'm not quite sure what went wrong in that car, but he's definitely leading things out and seems to be having a good turn of pace. JP Share back into the mix there. And in that mid pack, you can see just how hard they're fighting with Ans Ruiz now starting to apply the pressure. Three BMWs went three by three out of turn two there. That's how close it is here. Trappis van Tonda starting to apply the pressure once again. He sits currently in about second place there in his category. So watch out for Francois. He'll be moving up, trying to take on Baby Jakes and possibly spoil the day there for the M5. And M5 is just behind him at this point, so a little bit of work to be done for Trappis if he can keep it all together. Man warring with Ahmed on his tail. Behind that, you can see pushing hard Denver Benjamin. And then you've got Kiara Fenica because we go on board here with Gary Man Waring, looking to return the favor here on JP Share on the brakes down in the Cape Town corner. Let's have a look and see if he's good enough on the brakes now. Remember, this is only lap one, so maybe a little bit early to go for a dive on the inside. This time he backs out of it. He's got Ahmed on his outside, and he slots in there. Four BMWs in that mid-pack battle. This is a super start here once again from Wayne Wilson. He's just up ahead there, and there's Truppies. Truppies with... Oh, it's not far behind. Baby Jakes is only one car behind Truppies van Tonda there in the Universal Care. And this is all Class C's battle. So the Class C battle starting to heat up there. The one thing I've got to pick up on though, Ahmad in that mid-pack battle, he must have gone quicker than the 132s that he's been allocated for Class F. So there's a very good possibility he'll be moving up by the end of the day. No one's moved up any more than what this man has right now as Renard hangs on, but there is an issue all around the outside. The Wingfield Motors BMW and Lassure gets through there. And yeah, Renard pulling to the sideline. Clint Renard out of this one. Something on that golf is not working like it usually does. That's a big pity for him. He's a very good contender at the front end and usually puts on a great show two DNFs, well, a problem in race one, I should say, and a DNF now in race number two. But, yo, that's not the way he wants to be finishing his day, particularly here in front of his home crowd. Mid-pack battles continuing, but at the front, Donny Finnickirk now fending off the attack there from Alberts. Baby Jake starting to apply the pressure onto the back end of the 5-1. And I can tell you something, that little 3-2-5 IS of Anwar Levy is putting on a fantastic show here. But he's got a big M5 on his tail. Behind that, Trappis van Donda. So Francois van Donda trying to come through there as quickly as he can. And here's some maneuvering at the front end. Cody around the outside, Lassure on the inside. Alberts tries to hang on, he does. Tries to drive that BMW right the way around on the banking. Fortunately, it is a bank corner, so it definitely helps him out in terms of getting drive. He now tucks right behind Donny Van Ickirk. If you're standing on the wall when these cars come past, they don't sound like BMWs, I promise you right now. They sound like rocket ships. Listen to this. Yeah, that's amazing sound. As they come across there, that is how you do it. As I said, stock standard BMWs, not going into KFM corner. But the Wingfield Motors BMW has already taken one today. Can he get another one? Or is it going to be Lassure or Alberts to spoil his day? JP Shea goes into KFM. Just tucked in there behind Man Waring. He's lost a little bit of ground. And you can see a car just running off there wide. Looks like there might have been a little bit of issue there on JP's car as well. Bit of smoke starting to come off that back end. Not quite sure if it's body rope or maybe some engine issues. We'll keep an eye on it. There you can see he's definitely losing out there. On the inside, being overtaken by that uh, Jetta. And Devin Cammons just sliding through there. There's definitely an issue on JP's car. It's certainly not firing like it was, so let's keep an eye on that one and make sure that he gets to the end. He's now being closed down by a whole bunch of cars there just behind him. Denver Benjamin, Kiara Finnickirk, Byron Mitchell, and Dwayne Bernard all fighting hard. As they come down here, watch out as well for the little Nissan. That is Anton Jakobs. The little Nissan Sentra. Very, very good little car in Group N days and a great car here in Clubbins as well. Looks like JP might have just sorted out whatever issue he is or he had as they come through and now with a bit of pressure being put on there by Byron Mitchell. Back to the front. Here's a change-up. Truppy's diving on the inside. Anwar Levy opens up the door. And Francois Fontonda squeezes through there in the Universal Healthcare car. 
Great driving. Trappi's taking it on there with Anwar Levy. Just behind them, you can see Ernst Ruiz and Bruce Mayo lining up and getting ready to attack. Just behind them, Gary Manwaring leading out the Class D guys. He flies through there, staying just ahead of Denver Cammons. You can see JP's dropping back more and more and more. In fact, dropping back into the clutches there of the two ladies. So there's a possibility of Kiara van Ikuk getting up into the top 15. Manwaring has just got into the top 10. And now Ahmad with a bit of pressure there. The 84 car just uh, putting the pressure on that little polar. Bruce Mayer, great turn of pace on that machine. JP has now fallen back. And there's some big issues now as the 13 car of Denver Benjamin is being closed down as well by Kiara van Ikuk. So in the Wingfield Motors Golf, in uh, 14th place as the Wingfield Motors BMW in first place comes through Malmesbury Sweep for the very, very hot, hot double right-hander. And as they get onto the, the loud pedal down here, some of these cars reach over the 220k an hour mark. And these top two, and in fact, some of the front-end cars, that M5 as well, will probably be close to the 230, 240k an hour mark as they climb on the breakers. Down into Cape Town corner. Cody's applying pressure, but Donnie is soaking it up. I don't think you're going to see any changes up here. At Wingfield Motors BMW is a very, very quick car. Cody Albert's in a great BMW. And just behind them, you can see pushing hard in Class B and leading Class B, Wayne Wilson in the Nissan Maxima. Maxa hasn't quite got the pace of the front two cars, but he's been closed down rapidly there by Baby Jakes, who leads out Class C. So it's A, 1 and 2, B's in 3rd, C's in 4 and 5, as Francois Antonda comes under a bit of pressure now down on the breaking point. And Michael Lesseur trying to come back. In fact, I think Lesseur's got a bit of an issue here. Michael Lesseur's dropping back. Anwar Levy's gone through on him, easily into KFM corner. And I think Lesseur in that little Golf 1 is slowing. So Michael Lesseur, that's not how he wants to finish his day's racing, that is for sure. He was fighting at the front end here with these two cars at the start of the day. And there you can see confirmation of that. Oh, as I say, confirmation of that. Anwar's car's broken. Oh, that front left suspension is just shattered going into turn two. And that's it, game over. Levy stuck on the outside. That's a dangerous position for the car to be in. Might have a possible safety car. Let's wait and see as they head down there. Hopefully the Kalani Marshals can get that car out of harm's way in uh, a very rapid time. They've only got about three or four corners to do it in as our top two head down towards Cape Town again. No change up here. Cody Albert's just marking and matching Donnie at this point. There's a big move coming in the background though because Baby Jakes is closing down on Wayne Wilson. And Wilson in that DTM Heidelberg Gunnison Maxima could be in a bit of trouble. See if he's able to keep it all together though and keep out the attack from the big M5. We might have BMWs 1, 2, and 3 as they come through here into the closing stages. It's a 3-2-5 E36 that leads out across the line while they're starting the final lap. And Cody Alberts in the 330, 3-litre three there in second. Yeah, Wilson is definitely under threat. Heading down to KFM corner, that M5 is like a trailer on the back end of that Maxima. Two big, big cars going into KFM corner. Anwar out of harm's way. With one lap to go, I think they're going to go into double yellows here for turn two, which might just affect, yes it does, into turn two. Baby Jakes' chance to get through on Wayne Wilson. Jakes has a look, didn't quite get there, but let's see if he's able to keep it all together now, heading down towards three and four. Maybe set it up for the back straight to get through. Ahmad just ahead, yeah, pushing hard. The triple two car is Willem Swart. And a much better run there from him. He had issues in race number one. Good to see they got that issue sorted out, and he could race now for race number two. Further back, you can see they just continue the fights. Diervolt coming through there on the back end of the second of the Nis Nissan Maximus and coming to the line, the two BMWs for the win. But Donnie's got it. Cody Alberts is going to have to settle for second place. One and two in Class A, cross the line here for the Mike's Place Clubman Saloons. Great dicing on the track as well. In the background though, just waiting to see if we get an M5 or that Maxima coming through. It looks like it's going to be the M5 as a bit of showboating comes out of Donnie for Nickirk flinging the door open to say thanks to the crowd. And great days racing there for the Wingfield Motors BMW, taking the win in Class A ahead of Cody Alberts. Baby Jakes cups third overall, and he takes the win in Class C over Francois Fontonda. Ahmad moves up to fifth place, and a great ride there and win for Class F. Paul Munich takes the Class Bs, and let's catch up with the Class C winner, Baby Jakes. Well, it was very tough. It was uh, very hot. The car overheated in the first heat. Uh, temperatures run very high. I had to slack off uh, on the last hit just to get it uh, the go and then uh, it was all right, it was nice, it, was, it went well. Handling it's a bit of a problem but we're getting the, we are busy uh, um, developing the car so it will, it will get there. Good drive out of Class D and the win going to Gary Manwaring. It's the first time, uh, a lot of hard work we had. To get there, every time we'll win a race, the next race something would go wrong with the car. Oh, today we qualified pole in D and won both hits by a good margin. So something to celebrate for tonight for a change instead of going out miserable. 
A good drive as well from Truppies Van Tonda for Universal Healthcare. Plenty of cars, really. Um, I must say, I had a good day, except for the first race where I was also lying second. The petrol was finished. I don't know what happened, but the pet, there was no petrol in. Otherwise, I would have finished second in that race too. And I must say, great bunch of guys. Truppies is the... It's a, 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 a sport that everybody must come to, especially at Kalani, as you can see. There were so many cars in that. But thanks for you guys for being here too. It was a great day. Thanks a lot. All this action from the Clubman Saloons is proudly brought to you by Mike's Place.